You're listening to The Recovered Life Show, the show that helps people in recovery live their best recovered lives. And here is your host, Damon Frank. And welcome back to The Recovered Life Show. I am pleased to be joined today by Kristen Fuller, recovery coach on The Recovered Life Network, and is here to talk with us about better life mastery, how to have mastery in recovery. How you doing, Kristen? I'm doing great, Damon. I'm so happy to be part of this team. Thank you. I am so thrilled that you're on the show today uh, because we had a conversation offline that was just amazing about how to get these life skills and create life mastery. And I think deep down inside, everybody in recovery is looking to improve their life. So I'm so thrilled to talk with you today about this whole topic and kind of what you're doing on the Recovered Life Network. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So I've been looking forward to uh, this conversation. Likewise, I'm excited. So Kristen, I have to tell you right up front. Okay. So when I heard Life Mastery, I was, I personally was a little confused. I was like, okay, what is, what does Life Mastery mean? I know it has something to do with improving your life skills and the way in which you live your life, but can you give us kind of a snapshot about what is Life Mastery? I sure will. So in the recovery world, we look at, I'm just going to stop using, or I'm going to stop drinking. And that sometimes we look at that as the hardest piece of recovery. When the truth is adding life balance is where the gold is in recovery. When you learn how to add these skills coping tools, grounding tools, adding motivation, micro movements, all of the things that I teach, that is when you can create a balanced life and recovery is sustainable. You know what? So, so much. I I agree so much with what you're saying. One of the reasons I was excited to have the show today is, you know, we always have, we have the slogan with recovered life, go out and live your best recovered life. Right. And I think a lot of people get sober and what happens is they get sober and life gets worse. I know with me, when I got sober, actually my life situation got worse. And what was, what was even more apparent to me at the time, and I'm talking, you know, for me, I was, I was younger. I was in my twenties when I got sober. So, you know, I had, I was still learning a lot of life skills anyway. Right. But what became apparent to me is that my growth in life skills had kind of stunted, right? And I was not where I should have been in my mid-20s with some of the skills. Some skills were very advanced because of alcoholism. Other skills were very, very stunted. So I think this becomes so apparent when people get into recovery that they're missing. There's certain gaps. How did you learn this? I mean, I know you've had your own recovery journey. How did you kind of start to get to the point where you started to master your life skills in recovery? I, when I first stopped drinking, so it was 12, 26, 20, almost two years now. And I was under the impression that if I just didn't drink, everything else would fall into place. (laughs) And I learned quickly that that is not so. And As I started to learn more skills and tools, and most importantly, implementing them and practicing them, that is when I started to notice more fulfillment, more joy, more growth in my life. And and not just in my life personally, in my connections with other people, in my spiritual life, in all of the different areas that seek improvement when we make a commitment to transform. Yeah. You know, I think the interesting thing about this whole life mastery situation is more will be revealed as they say, right? Like, so, you know, it was interesting. It was probably like a month into my recovery when I looked down and I saw a pile of bills that I had not dealt with. Right. And now three decades into recovery, that's something that probably won't happen to me a lot. Like I pride myself in, you know, making sure that I take care of every little detail I've evolved, but you know, I really didn't have those skills when I first started 
in recovery. They had to be kind of earned, right? I had to ask other people for them. One of the reasons I was so thrilled to talk with you today is that I think a lot of people see their lives as a mess because they wake up to all the wreckage, right? At first, it's great. Oh my God, I wake up. I'm not hurting. I feel healthier, right? But then you start to realize, wow, look at all of this wreckage. You know, how does somebody say, you know, it's just early recovery blues, Kristen, or really they maybe don't have the kind of life skills they need? What are kind of some of, some of the things that people will see in their life that don't have great life mastery? What I notice, and this is a common thread in different clients that I've served or different workshops that I've taught, the feeling of being wobbly is present. Maybe they don't feel sure-footed. Sometimes they're still showing signs of anxiety, um, panic disorder, PTSD symptoms. These are all different cues for me as a coach to kind of get my hands around them and say, there's more to look at here. We need to talk about how to make you feel safe when you have panic or nightmares. We need to talk about how to make you feel connected. Another incredibly important component in recovery. So those are different places that I look at to kind of plug them into <laughs> to make them feel like, oh yeah, I can sustain this. I can yes. keep going. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting that you say this because these feelings of anxiety too, you know, I've had a lot of people in early recovery tell me, it's like, Damon, I feel anxious. I'm like, okay, you're $3 away from homelessness. No one in your life is talking to you. You're having a hard time staying sober for a week, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, anyone would be anxious with those situations, right? But right. it's this prolonged anxiety and this ability, and I, you know, I, and I hear this a lot. I hear this a lot in 12 step rooms and this is unfortunate. It's kind of like, well, I'm just a drug addict. I'm just an alcoholic. I'm just codependent. Like it's always going to be that way. You know, it's just like, I'm just a screw up, right? I'm broken. Like, I don't believe that personally, right? Like it's going to take effort and it's going to take, it's going to take your ability to be able to really push yourself to try to get some of these things. How do people have this in, shift that inner dialogue from I'm just a screw up, I can't get my life together to becoming a master at being able to uh, operate their own life? I feel like that starts with self compassion and. In 16. You stopped learning, absorbing, growing mentally and emotionally. It takes some of the pressure off of them. They feel like, oh, well, that makes sense. That checks out. And when someone is able to take some of the either shame or internal blame off of themselves, then it opens them up to be able to learn all of these different skills and try different things that of course they didn't know. Just like Maya Angelou's, one of my favorite quotes, when you know better, you do better. You did it that way for so long because you didn't know any better. Here's the skills to do better. Well, now, you know, you've hit on a couple of things that I think are true to most people that I see in recovery, not everything is blanket that everybody's like this, right. but many people that are in recovery um, have this feeling of shame, right? They carry it over. Yeah. And it's, it's what I call unplaced, right? It's, it's like not placed. Well, that they shouldn't even be taking credit for the shame, right? They yeah. did really nothing wrong. Right. But maybe they grow up in a dysfunctional family. Maybe they have an alcoholic uh, who is, is a parent, uh, maybe they have done certain things, right, um, th when they were out there drinking and using, and they're having a very, very, very hard time, um, you know, dealing with that now that they're in recovery. And so, 
you know, this, this feeling of shame, this feeling of guilt, this feeling of I'm never really going to be able to get over this is something that I think is very prevalent. But I think that the response to it is just, well, that's it. I used to not be great. I'm not perfect now. So I'm never really going to be able to have a better life. I think that these are the things that people tell themselves. And I think it keeps people stuck, Kristen, don't you? I mean, that's yeah. most of what you're doing as a coach is getting people unstuck, I assume. That's <laughs> that's almost 100% of it. It is imperative that the script that they are telling themselves is changed. And that's part of what I teach in the class, all of the different classes, is when we change that internal dialogue to something that we would either say to our younger selves or to our own children or to our little brother or sister, then it changes the way that we talk to ourselves. And when clients can do that, then they also change the energy that they're bringing into their lives. If you say over and over, I'm just an addict, I'm a loser, I'm disorganized. That is what you will be. What you absolutely put out is what you will receive. So by learning these tools, it completely changes how you show up in the world. This is, this is so important. This inner dialogue, you know, I talk about this a lot. We talk about this on the show a lot, Kristen, because this inner dialogue of, and this gap, right? So you see this gap. It's like, this is who I am. I'm no longer this person anymore. Um, and then this is who I am now, but this is the potential of who I might be able to become. Right. And, sure. you know, I think for anybody who's not an, an alcoholic, they might have a hard concept with this, right? Or anybody who's not in recovery might really struggle with this. They're like going, yeah, well, that's just evolution. But I think this trauma that people have, I know I had it when I first got sober, just like, oh my God, you know, I was an alcoholic and oh my God, like, you know, I had no idea that it had such a grip on me. You will start to awaken and you're almost in this surrealistic place where you know you're no longer that person right? But you're not quite this other person. So it's like trying to get there. It, it just seems sometimes like you're climbing a mountain that you're never going to be able to get to. That's right. That's one of the visuals that I use in class is, you know, when you set out to climb Mount Everest, <laughs> you don't just start up the mountain. It takes probably at least a year of planning there's a base camp. There are Sherpas. There are guides. There is a whole village organized to help you summit Everest. And that's how recovery is. And when we talk about different skill building and different things that we can teach you, I always fall back on when we talk about the person that you are and then the person that you wish to become, James Clear, who wrote Atomic Habits, says every action that you take is a vote for the person that you wish to become. So by teaching these life mastery classes and giving the students the tools, they have the chance daily to vote by these actions to become this version of themselves that they're looking forward to. Absolutely. You know what? That's so important. It's like you're taking one bite at a time out of this. You know, Kristen, when we get back from the break, I want you to share some of the best stuff that you have okay. to be able to get people unstuck, to be able to get people, if they see that, look, they could have a lot more life mastery. Some of the things that you were talking about is organization, you know, how you keep yourself, your home, your, your belongings, things like that. We're going to dive into some of Kristen's top tips when we come back from this quick break. If you are newly sober, trying to get sober, or you've been sober for decades and are looking to take your sobriety to the next level, the Recovery Breakthrough six-week transformation concierge coaching program might be right for you. Have Damon Frank and Christina Dennis 
build a custom roadmap to get you on the path to getting what you really need. Receive hands-on concierge coaching and stay focused and productive with our daily check-ins. If you're ready to experience your recovery breakthrough and start the journey towards the transformation you deserve, book a free get to know you call today and find out what is possible in your recovery. To find out more about Recovery Breakthrough and to book your free call, go to recoveredlife.us. That's recoveredlife.us. You're listening to The Recovered Life Show. Okay, I'm back with Kristen Fuller. Kristen, I am so excited about this part of The Recovered Life Show because we're going to dive in to skills that people can implement if they're listening to this to be able to get some some life mastery, more life mastery, right? Look, we know we're never going to be perfect. So let's say that up front, right? The strive for perfection, that's only hurting us. But getting better, having more life mastery, coming from a place of not really sure about how you're going to get there to doing it day to day. How do you do it, Kristen? How do you do it? Give us some great tips here. (laughs) All right. So I'm going to share a couple of my favorite that are completely attainable. Everybody can do it. So the first little tidbit is when you first wake up, make your bed. I'm a mom, so I know that that comes out very kind of obvious and natural. Here's why. Here's the science behind that. When we make our bed, then we end up putting the pillows on it. Then we end up maybe folding the blanket at the end of the bed. It sets a signal to our brain. We're going to be organized. We are going to move throughout the rest of the day in an organized manner. And then it makes it hard not to put your pajamas away. The drawer's right there. And then as you go through, you know, rinse out your coffee cup when you're done. It just, it's a minor, minor adjustment that sets the tone for the rest of your day. I love that. Now, I'm going to tell you, Kristen, I, this is something that was given to me in early recovery, the make the bed thing. And I actually had worked with a guy in a 12 step group that he would not talk to you unless you made your bed right (laughs) at the beginning of the day. He's just like, no, like you got to tackle, like, we'll worry about like how you become the CEO of this company after you figure out how you could make your bed for seven days straight. And, you know, at the time it's so used to piss me off. I'm going to, I'm just going to be honest. I used to say, oh my God, what does this have to do with anything? But it really, you're talking about the coffee cup, Kristen, you're talking about all these little things, the little things matter, right? Yes. Yes. The little things add up to be a portrayal again of how you show up in the world. So when you start your day with a vote to become a more organized person, to become a more cleanly person, then it sets you up in that manner throughout your day. It doesn't just stop with your bed. 110%. So give us a couple other skills here that people can do if they're, if they're, if they're in nowhere land right now, I love the small little things because that's made the big difference is the small things, but what's something else that people could do? So this one is also time-wise a very small increment, but how it works is almost like a magic wand. So I like to call this five minutes until. (laughs) So what you do is you set your timer on your phone for five minutes, set timer for five minutes, and you choose something that is an action to move you in the right direction, either to a new habit, a different behavior, I'm going to use yoga as an example. Um, For my trauma clients, yoga is incredibly powerful for releasing stuck trauma that's stored in their bodies. And a lot of them are adverse to it because they don't 
really want to move their bodies. They're not comfortable in their bodies, but they want to get there. So I asked them to set a timer on their phone just for five minutes and in your pajamas or in the comfort and privacy of your home, find a moving meditation video on YouTube or social media. Find a five minute Tai Chi video. Find a five minute yoga video. When you move your body for five minutes, the odds are very slim that you're ready to shut the video off after five minutes. It feels oh, that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Just that, just yep. taking that time out to do something physical. And, you know, I've noticed that in my own recovery is that, um, that reduces the anxiety, right? Because when I'm actually moving and doing something and I have this mindfulness is what I think you're talking about. Mm -hmm. This mindfulness reduces that anxiety and obsessive thinking. It does. And pretty much anybody can do anything for five minutes. It's not so long that it's going to make you late for work or <laughs> anything like that, or cut carve into your family time. I'm just asking for five minutes and I'm asking for consistency. Notice I didn't say intensity. I'm not cracking the whip over here. I'm asking for consistent daily engagement with your new behavior or new activity for five minutes. Mm, love that. Love that. And I think, you know, can you talk to about like the stream of life, adding too much things in the stream of life? Because I think this is an issue too, that a lot of people in recovery have is they, they become awake, aware and alive, as I say, right. I and that. they're awake, aware and alive. And what happens is they start taking on this and then they're, you know, they do 12 steps and then they're in therapy and then they're like, well, I got to lose this 15 pounds. They're in the gym every day. And then they've, they've packed so much into the stream of life that they really can't become the master at anything, right? They really can't do anything. And that causes so much anxiety. And of course, in a way I find I've done this in the past, I'm setting myself up for failure mm -hmm. because I know that I'm never going to be able to keep that pace forever. I'm not going to be able to keep that pace forever, right? So how do you how do you pick, I guess? How do you be a good steward of your time, Kristen, to make sure that you're picking the things that are really going to work and you're not over committing? I use an analogy of someone juggling balls in the air. And the way that you pick which to keep in the air is basically determining which are rubber balls and which are glass balls. The glass balls are things that pertain to your health. The glass balls are things that pertain to your sobriety. And the rubber balls are things that are maybe favors or little just things that take up time or maybe a little too much on social media <laughs> type of things. So I like to use that analogy when we're naming values and deciding where we want to ha have our time spent. I love that because you could really, you could life mastery yourself right into a relapse. If oh, you're not putting this stuff in front of you, that's most important. You know, one of the biggest life mastery things I had to do, Chris, in recovery, I'll, I'm going to tell you honestly, like, you know, anybody who knows me more than five minutes or has been to one of my meetings uh, understands that like, I hate unmanageability, the concept that, you know, out recovered alcoholic, there's unmanageability. Um, I hate powerlessness, like just to my core, like I've learned to accept it, but I don't like it. Like, I, I don't like it. So the, the idea that I can't do everything right. Um, perfectly all the time is very upsetting to me. And I've had to like, get over myself. Like that's one of the biggest things is just kind of let go and accept that my life isn't going to be perfect. That even if I've come so far, right, Kristen, no one has a perfect life. And I think so many times in recovery, people go, I'm going to get there. And it's not a hundred percent perfect. They're missing all the beauty and great stuff that's happening day to day in their lives in sobriety. Yeah. It's back to mindfulness. 
Um, the, the other tool that I love sharing is the gratitude journal. It's not just something woo woo or trendy. There is science behind having gratitude at the end of, or the beginning or both <laughs> of your day, because it shifts your negativity bias that we are born with inherently. And just that little 30 to 50 second practice of writing down five things that you have gratitude for that happened in your day is rewiring your entire brain. I mean, talk about magic. <laughs> it, it really is from a neuroscience standpoint. Yes. It is. It's rewiring your brain. This has been so helpful. Thank you so much for coming on. I want to take a little bit of time to talk about this life mastery hour that you have brought exclusively to the Recovered Life Network. And let's talk about that. It's Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific. Yes. And uh, that's the time, right? I've got the right time. Yes. Okay. Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific. And what can people expect? This is a peer support meeting for people that are in recovery from everything. It could be any discipline of recovery, right? You can come in and spend an hour with Chris. What can people expect in this Life Mastery Hour? So it's multifaceted. I love the idea of helping all of the different pieces that make us up. So there will be coursework in self-compassion and acceptance. There will be coursework in mindfulness and meditation or grounding, learning how to be still. There will be coursework in goal setting and naming values. These are all different areas that make up having a fulfilling life in recovery. A a absolutely. I mean, you know, um, I, you know, I, I, I was so thrilled when you were able to bring this to recovered life because one of the issues that I found is that like, I found some of this stuff late, right? Yes. I know all of us in rec recovery coaches, when we talk behind the scenes, you know, we talk about, uh, we talk about like, wow, I wish I would have had this skill. I wouldn't have suffered as much if I had, you know, access um, to some of these things that are in there. Um, one of the things that you designed in this life, uh, mastery hour is the ability for people to share and check in with each other about yes. where they're at with specific points of their life mastery. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's important. We learn from one another in a group or a classroom type setting. And the beauty of a peer recovery group is no matter where we are, 20 years or 20 days, we learn something from each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Kristen, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, we're going to have you on in future episodes about how to really dial in on this life mastery uh, on specific topics. But I would encourage everybody to go to that life mastery hour with Kristen Fuller on the Recovered Life Network, recoveredlife.us, Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific. You can reach her every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Come in. It is the value of a lifetime, guys. And we're also going to put links to Kristen. If, you've got a, if you have a life mastery issue, if you need to pick up some of the things because you just feel that your life is shattered, Kristen, I know you work with people individually uh, to do. help get them back on track, their accountability and all that stuff. So we're going to put links to how you can reach Kristen. Guys, go out and live your best recovered life. Kristen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on today and My sharing pleasure. all of these helpful tips. You're welcome. Thank you, Damon. Keep the conversation going. Join Recovered Life, a community of like-minded people who are looking to live their best recovered lives. Membership is free and you can apply at recoveredlife.us.